little adventure, Singapore's newest gardens just reopened. But is it worth a visit? What's good to see? How to get here? Let's find out. The Chinese and the Japanese gardens are part of the Jurong Lake Gardens, which is the most beautiful green space in the west of Singapore. Let me take you in for a closer look. Welcome to the Chinese Garden. As the name suggests, it's an homage to a Chinese-style garden, complete with pagodas and spread of lilies. Or is it lotus? I love how oriental the entrance is. It makes you feel like you're not in Singapore. Now let me show you what's good in the Chinese garden. Let's go! The Bonsai Garden. Here, you can enjoy beautiful Suzhou-style architecture and admire very curvy bonsai trees. And don't miss out the indoor bonsai exhibit in the bonsai garden. And the twin pagodas by the lake, which you can actually climb up and enjoy a 360 high view of the whole garden. It's a super easy climb, 10 out of 10 would recommend. The view here, oh, and the wind, it's amazing. And what if I tell you there's an even bigger pagoda than this? At 48 meters high, this is a super prominent landmark that's hard to miss. You can actually see it from almost anywhere in the Chinese garden. The biggest shame is that you can't go up there. You can't even enter. You can only admire it from that fence over there. Can you imagine building such a beautiful public building just to cordon it off? Sure, you can protect it. It will last longer. But by then, who will remember? And this is my favourite view in the Chinese garden. Over there is the stone boat. At first, I didn't get it, but I saw the front wavy thing that looks like the front of a boat. So yeah, it's a stone boat. And across the sprawling lily fields are the tea houses with that cloud pagoda in the background. And the most interesting for me are modern HDB buildings in the background. It makes me feel that traditional beauty can coexist with modern buildings. But that's not all. If you cross this bridge, you get to experience another whole new world of Japanese garden. Nihon teyane yokoso. Irasaimase. Itadakimasu. Similarly, this is an homage to a Japanese style garden. So you can save money and come here instead of flying to Japan. Now, let me show you what's good in the Japanese garden. This is the breathing gallery where you can experience a world of terrariums in an air-conditioned indoor building. Ah, so cooling. It is also free to enter. There's even a seat inside that you can just chill and maybe read a book or even do your work. There's an electric plug here you can charge your laptop. But take note, dogs are not allowed inside. By the way, if you find this video helpful so far, please leave a like so that more people can find it. Thank you very much. Now, if you find all these terrariums very cool, there's an even bigger collection of plants just outside. Find hundreds of lilies in the water lily garden. There are said to be over 150 lily species in this pond. I mean, I didn't count, but yeah, there seems to be a lot of lilies. I was lucky to meet a friendly local cockatoo who's on his daily walk around the garden. <laughs> Hello, adventurers. Ah. At first, he was a cockatoo. Then he was a dog, and then a chicken. Angelo, enough. You're getting oh. noisy, Angelo. But my real dog was getting jealous. It is back. Oh. Ah. The lilies are nice, but if you're looking for a more sheltered location, then this next location will be perfect for you. The theme here is water and creeping plants. So you'll find a lot of moisture-loving flora decorating the walls of the garden. The real gem that I found here is this ice cream shop tucked in the middle of the sunken garden. I quite like the ice cream. Maybe I should ask for a free scoop. Why Wok Hei can't eat ice cream, he can lick the ice cream man. Surprisingly, it's quite cooling inside the sunken cove, despite the hot weather outside. And I'm also very pleasantly surprised that there are no mosquitoes despite all of these water features. But if you want to experience more Japanese zen, you have to go to this next location. 
it's called the tea house, but I feel very betrayed because there's no tea here. And in fact, they haven't really finished building the tea house. It's okay, can just continue. <laughs> just beside the tea house, there's another huge Japanese building with a water feature. Again, I feel very cheated because they don't take any guests. It's actually just an event space for public festivities. Further into the Japanese garden, there's a very rare, large open space that you cannot find in Singapore. It's very rare in Singapore to have such a large, beautiful green space where you can just appreciate the peace and quiet. Now, after walking all over the gardens, you might be hungry. Other than the ice cream shop at the Sunken Garden, there's also a restaurant in Chinese Garden right beside the Grand Arch, the Canopy. It's a gorgeous garden-themed restaurant. I was impressed by the food, but I was also horrified by the prices. So, if you're going on a budget, I recommend bringing your own food and utilize the public tables and chairs to have your own picnic. Or bring a mat and call all your buddies to have a picnic after enjoying all of the sights. One big plus is that it's dog-friendly. Snow. Good boy. It's also a great idea to bring an umbrella because in Singapore, when it rains, it pours. Although there are shelters all over the place, the rain might last longer than you're willing to wait. Walking! And guess how many toilets are there in Chinese and Japanese garden? Hmm? The answer is 13. I also couldn't believe it, but when I walk around, I keep seeing toilet everywhere. Toilet, toilet again. And when I check the map, yes, there are 13 toilets. So if you're having a very bad stomach ache, it's still safe to come to this garden. Most of the toilets also come with water refill facilities, so that you can stay hydrated. The fastest and the easiest way to get here by public transportation is to take the train to Chinese Garden Station and from there, you'll see the Cloud Pagoda. From there, just walk towards it and you'll reach the Chinese Garden. To get to the Japanese Garden, simply cross the Moonrise Bridge or the Double Beauty Bridge. If you're in the mood for more gardens, the whole Jurong Lake District is at your feet. As a Singaporean local, the Chinese and Japanese gardens are very refreshing. It's very amazing to have new, beautiful public space that I can bring my family and friends to. So to my fellow Singaporeans and locals who live here, this is definitely a recommended place that you can go to. I mean, it's free to come here. So just take it as a cheap weekend getaway. However, for tourists visiting Singapore, unless you've been to everywhere else in Singapore, I wouldn't recommend coming here. Due to its location that is very far west, far away from any other tourist attractions, you will need to make special arrangements to come here. And you will likely spend more time in the bus and the train than actually sightseeing. So I recommend enjoying the other attractions first. If you want to see more of Singapore, check out my video over here, where I'll show you something unique in every train station in Singapore. I'll see you there. Walk here has got a fan. Oh,